What could Apple learn from Google's Pixel 2 XL, Android P, and its multitasking methodologies? Let's find out. So let's talk about invoking the app switcher on the Pixel 2 XL with Android P. Now, let me just preface this video by saying not all of these are necessarily Android P features, but some of them are, uh, such as with the multitasking and things of that nature. So let me show you how easy it is. First of all, to get back to the home screen, you just press the little home button there. Uh, that is very simple, straightforward, right? But also that little home button, there's more than meets the eye initially with that home button. For instance, if you want to open up the app switcher, all you need to do is simply swipe up from that bottom area like that and there's the app switcher. Now on the iPhone 10, it's a little bit different. A swipe up will actually just take you back to the home screen. You actually have to swipe up and pause a little bit in order to invoke the app switcher on the iPhone 10. Now let's talk about the app switcher interface on the Pixel 2 XL because it's a little more complicated. I won't say complicated, but just a little more cluttered, if you will, than the iPhone, for instance, because you have a lot of additional features in the app switcher. It reminds me of sort of a, of a jailbreak tweak uh, for the iPhone. But here you see recent apps. You have five of your most recently used applications. You can quickly access those just by tapping them at the bottom of the app switcher interface. That's really nice, actually. And then above that, the uh, that recent use apps bar you have the Google search bar and then you can use that to actually type in a search or invoke the Google assistant and at the top you also have a status bar which shows you any notifications you may have pending the time etc compared to the iPhone 10 app switcher interface yes it is a lot more cluttered but I like the functionality that it brings to the table now let's talk about actually swiping through and switching apps. It's very similar to what you will find on an iPhone. You simply swipe through the app card, tap on the app you wanna to switch to, and you switch to that app. Animations aren't nearly as great, and that's no surprise. You don't have rubber banding and things of that nature. Animations are just, they've always been clunky feeling to me. They just don't seem as smooth as they do on the iPhone 10 with its rubber banding and just really refined animations, but it's not bad. Now there's more than meets the eye with that little home button at the bottom of the interface. If you actually slide that over like that, you can quickly switch between the last two apps. Just slide it over to the right like that, release, and you can quickly navigate between the last two apps, the last two most recently used apps that is. Uh, you could do something similar on the iPhone, but you have to remember to interact with the application before it allow you to switch between the most recently used apps. Otherwise it'll just cycle through all the apps in the app switcher. Now, speaking of cycling through apps, you can quickly do so using this little home button. Just slide it over like this, slide it all the way over, and you can quickly navigate through apps like that. Now, uh, that's a quick way to do so. You can also obviously just swipe over the app cards themselves, but if you like to just quickly navigate through, just kind of peek and see what's going on in the app switcher, this is a good way to do so. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that. So once you land on the application you want to launch, you just release your finger off the home button like that and it launches. Now again, iOS features a similar quick switching method by swiping at the bottom of the home indicator. Now for its closing apps on the Pixel 2 XL is as simple as invoking the app switcher and then swiping up on the app that you wish to close like that. Very, very similar to iOS, except that it's more similar to iOS versions that don't run on the iPhone 10. With the iPhone 10, you have to long press on the cards before they're eligible to be closed using a swipe up gesture. The app drawer on Android is a fairly unique feature. It doesn't appear on iOS. There is no synonymous feature that is. Uh, to access that, all you need to do is swipe up from the bottom of the screen in one gesture if you're on the home screen. If you're in an app, you swipe up to reveal the app switcher first, then swipe up to reveal the app drawer, which contains all of the apps installed on your phone. Split screen isn't a new Android feature, but let me show you how it works here on the Pixel 2 XL. So you invoke the app switcher, you tap the icon at the top of the switcher card, tap split screen, select another app, and there you go. Split screen mode right there on the Pixel 2 XL. You just drag down like that to change up the ratio. But this is really, really handy. I'm telling you, people may not think this will be useful on the iPhone, but it's a feature that I definitely think should come to the iPhone. You can even use the, the standard app switcher functionality to switch between that secondary app just like that. You can pull in that secondary app from your recents in the app switcher, or you can even just open up the app drawer, select an application, 
and then have that running side by side with another application. Super, super handy feature that I hope will eventually come to iOS because it's awesome. And speaking of awesome, yes, picture in picture mode is something that I wish would come to the iPhone. It's such a handy feature, even though it's a very small window, you just tap the home button while watching a video. You can move that around like that and multitask. You can be browsing a web page, browsing Twitter, still watching your video, hearing the sound. And then when you want to bring it back to full screen, you simply tap on it and tap the full screen button just like that. Hopefully this will come to the iPhone as well. And then lastly, quick app rotation is an Android P feature that I really enjoy having on the Pixel 2 XL. Basically, this allows me to bypass whatever my rotation lock settings are. So even if the phone is locked into portrait mode, I can force an application to switch to landscape or portrait mode with the touch of a button. And that doesn't change the fact that auto rotation is still disabled. So again, go to force back into portrait mode, just like that. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think iOS or Android could learn from one another? Share down below in the comments your thoughts and opinions. You know where to go down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.